You're listening to the Huff and Gill Show with your host, Tyler Huff and Earl Gill on 107.9 The Fan. Inside his 15-yard line, and Kenyon Barner is gets away from a defender, and Barner going up the middle. Barner gets into Carolina territory. Kenyon Barner has blockers. Barner still on his feet, going in and dives for the touchdown. A brilliant puck return by Kenyon Barner. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another special edition of the Power Hour with Huff and Gill. What's going on, Gil? How you doing, bro? Man, Tyler, I'm, I'm teasing here to here because you got somebody that you done brought on. And I, I'm older than bro, probably, but I looked up to him on the field watching him get down. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, man, definitely got a legend on in his own regard with us today. None other than three-time Super Bowl champion, Kenyon Barner. What's going on? What's happening, baby? How we doing? How we doing? Good. I right, see you got Dame Dollar. Shout out to my boy Houston, man. Shout out to Dame. That's my dude right there. You know, Dame. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with Houston, man. Houston, little okay. real good people. So that's what yeah. I just recognize that on your shirt. That's real. Yeah, yeah y'all rock with bro heavy. Yeah. Yes, sir. But look, before we get started, I want to apologize to y'all because I know we've been trying to get this going for a cool little minute. But I want to apologize to y'all for dropping that ball as many times as I dropped it. And I appreciate y'all showing me mercy and grace and having me on with y'all. So I apologize to y'all for that. I just wanted to get man. that on record, set the record straight for that. Oh, that's real. You trying to help us run it up. But man, I got some questions, man. Like, well, I got some answers. I, that, that's what I'm talking about, man. So, <laughs> so check me out, bro. When you were in college, you were part of a prolific offense, right? But I'm going to take it further than that. You and one of our homies from out here, LaMike, LaMichael, you guys ushered in a new era of running backs. And I'm not, it's not a knock because a smaller running back is probably more so a better running back. And you guys show how to be efficient doing so. And you did it with your headband on. You brought that swag. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what would you like to say about like what you did in college and how it, bro, whether you like to admit it or not, bro, you and him, a tag team duo, changed the the aspect of what people looked at running backs. Because people wanted Lindell White and Reggie Bush before it was you two guys, you feel me? And mm-hmm. then when you two guys came, well, maybe we can get a scat back. and Maybe they are durable. And both of you guys battled injury, fought back, showed you all were tough. You know, what would you like to say about that? Man, that whole, that whole, those, those four years, three years, you know, for Mike, four years for me, um, it's a blessing, bro, honestly. Um, you know, we came to a place that was on the up, that was that was ready to boom. We came, we got there, and uh, we got opportunities, and we prepped ourselves for them opportunities. Um, you know, being the size that we are, it don't matter how big you are, one thing you can't measure is heart. And y'all know the mic personally, just like I do. Uh, we two different cats that come from two different backgrounds, but got the same mentality. We're gonna get it however we can in any way possible. Um, so our size was never something that, for us, that we looked at as a negative. The bottom line was, is you was gonna, you was gonna have to stop us. You was gonna have to deal with us, whether it was from a physicality standpoint or being out in the open space, making a tackle, you was gonna have to deal with us one way or the other. But to be, you know, for you to say that we, you know, we ushered in a new, a new realm, a new era of backs. Um, I don't really think about it, um, honestly. Uh, in the league, I would say more so the past couple, four or five years, young guys have come in the league and they kind of bring it to my mind, like, you know, the, Hey, y'all was the reason I played or, you know, we wanted to come to Oregon. You know, I, my style was after you and stuff like that. So it, it, it really hasn't, it really hasn't hit me, bro. Honestly, I'm not, I, I can't even get on here and say, you know, I got an answer for that. Cause I've never really thought about it that way. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a cat who came from Reno Valley, made it to a division one program and put on. And that's how I look at it. It wasn't, I didn't set out to be, you know, some example or something for people to look, look up to. I was just trying to get it how I got it and uh, make a way for my family. So you're a Cali guy, right? Yes, sir, through and through. <laughs> no, no, no Cal? Southern Cali, two different worlds, okay. baby. Hey, it is two different, <laughs> I had to make, look, I'm from Arkansas, so I don't, you know, I, I, I've been out to Santa Monica a lot, but I don't, outside of that, I'm scared. I don't know what's going on out there. <laughs> so, so, all right, so you're a West, so you're a Cali guy. 
why not USC? Why not Cal? Why not UCLA? You know, why not Arizona? Some closer to you. What made you go north where it's cold and it rain? So Arizona, Arizona State was my number one. Okay. That was my number one school coming out. And uh, I had a scholarship offer from him, but I was in no rush to commit. Yeah. Um, Arizona State had offered another back <clears throat> out of my area, Ryan Bass, who was a dog. Absolute dog. Yeah. If y'all ever heard of Ryan Bass, pull up his tape. Bass was a Bass was a, a dog on that field, but they offered him and um, they tried to force me to commit just like colleges do still to this day. Absolutely um, they do. Yeah, it told me it was like, well, you got to the end of the week to commit. I told him, Y'all can kiss my ass. <laughs> <That's right laughs> like, up. I'm not this is my future. Y'all not gonna force me into any in, into any position. So Arizona State was my number one. USC, UCLA came along after I committed to Oregon. Um, and I'm a loyal cat, so I gave my word. I said, I'm coming. It didn't matter what SC came with. It didn't matter what UCLA came with. I gave my word. I was coming. I was coming. But more importantly, than that, I need to get away from home. I need to get out of Cali. Um, I need to get away from friends. I had to I had to get away so I could become the man that I am today. Um, if I would have stayed in California, I would have been too close. You know, the reach would have been too close. I would have still been up under my mom and my dad. Still would have been a little, you know, I, I wouldn't have matured in the way that I matured going off and being on my own. You know, leaving home, that's a, that's a battle in its own, being away from everything that you know. I had never left California for more than three days. So, how did you swerve them pressures of the neighborhood and the people that you grew up with? Um, yeah. I, but I've always been a kid, bro. And even as a man, I'm still, I'm, I'm the same. I always sit back, I watch and observe. And, yeah. I, and I seen, I tried, you know what I'm saying? I tried it. Yeah. I'm like, this is what my brother's doing, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing Absolutely. this. Um, yeah. But it wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? I want something different. Yeah. But then more, more more than anything, bro, my dad wasn't gone. <laughs> my, <laughs> my pops, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, the, 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 the statistics of a black man, a black child growing up with, without their father, a father, a, a father pre, presence of yeah. figure, that, that's, that's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's high, and it's high too. It's really high. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And so, a lot of my homies didn't have that. Yeah. yeah. But my dad, bro, he wasn't going. He wasn't going to let me go astray. You know what I'm saying? He was going to fight me to death before he let me do something. You know what I'm saying? That jeopardized my future. And especially once he always wanted something greater for me. He always wanted me to be better than what he was. He wanted the same for all of us. It was just, I was the youngest. So I got the best version of my dad because he learned through my older brothers and my sister. So I got a different dad um, than what they had, but he wasn't going. You know what I'm saying? And even regardless of what I tried, I was, my dad is well respected everywhere. But Absolutely. Where, you know what I'm saying? Where, where where I was living, where we live in Reno Valley, everybody knew my dad. So yeah. I'm in junior high school doing everything that I'm doing. Everything getting back to my dad, I just don't know it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Secur security guards are snitching. Everybody's yeah. snitching. Everybody's snitching. Everybody's telling. Yeah. So my dad ended up taking me out of public school. And honestly, bro, that was the greatest decision my dad could have made in my life at that point in time. He took me away from everybody that I knew, everybody that I was coming up with, because the majority of the cats that I came up with either dead or in jail or had been in jail and got out. Yeah. Um, so him creating that separation for me and sending me somewhere in a culture that I knew nothing about, that's how I avoided it. My question would be, uh, piggyback and all that what was your biggest motivation along your journey to getting to this point of where you are now you know what I'm saying what 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 fueled the fire I've always been self-motivated honestly um, I never needed an outside force to motivate me um, but if I had to put it on something bro it was my dad you know I seen how, my dad and my mom I seen how hard they struggled um, for me and my brothers and my sisters I seen what it was for them, I, I I know what they said. As I got older, I've, I've understood the sacrifice that it took to raise six boys and a girl. Um, my older brothers poured into me like no other, and I seen where they fell short. So their failures, in a sense, became my lessons. It became my motivation because I wanted to make it not only for myself, but I wanted to make it so my brothers could experience everything that I experienced. That my sister, if she needed me, I could be there for. Her. My mom and dad needed me to help them. I could be there for them and help them. So my, I would say my the, my motivational factor has always been my family. I'm huge on family, bro. Uh, without my mom, my dad, my brothers, and my sisters, I wouldn't be nowhere near where I am. They are everything to me. Without them, I'm, I am nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so 
they have always been my motivational factor. Everything that I do still to this day is because I want to be able to be there for my family in a way that we never had. So, uh, well, I was going to ask, though, do you think the way you were, you know what I'm saying, the your foundation of going to private school helped you better when you went to Eugene? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, like, yeah, yeah. you know, I've taught, you know who Trey Carson is, right? Yeah, that's Pluto. That's my dog. Pluto. Okay, yeah. So me and Pluto talk about it sometimes. He's like, Earl, man, it was raining every day. You got to go to class. And I'm like, huh? No, right, like, you know, it, it is raining every day. It's a, it's a, even, even though I, even though I was around a lot of white people, around a lot of Asian, the demographics of people, I was around that demographic. Going to Eugene was a whole nother culture shock. Why is that? Because now, bro, you're dealing with a whole, you're dealing with a different, a different breed, a different, oh, yeah. different you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's not too many of us up there. Absolutely. I went to school in Fayetteville, so I get what you're okay. saying. Yeah, so, yeah. so the stuff that you're dealing with, bro, isn't stuff that I dealt with being in a private school setting in California. You know, they, it, yeah. it just completely different. I'm around a lot of people that don't look like me. I'm around a lot of people that, that don't have in common the things that I like to get involved in. I'm around a lot of people who look at me different because I look the way that I look. Um, yeah. So it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a major culture shock, but a place is only as good as the company you keep. You know what I'm saying? Me and Lamar got close. And then a lot of the other cast, the Walter Thurmans, the Eddie Pleasants, the Jarius Birds, the Pat Chung, the Jerome Boyds, Anthony Gildens, the Thomas Jacksons. I can go on and on and on and on and on. Naming Willie Gladwell. I could go on and on naming cats that took me up under their wing and made sure that I was good. So it was, it was for sure culture shock and it was a completely different world. But when you have people like those guys that you can identify with, that you that have already been there for years and been doing it, they make it a hell of a lot easier. So is Chip Kelly's playbook harder than the one you got to study now? Or like, is it easier? Cause your OC is a hell of an OC. He be dialing them up over there. I like it. Yeah, I like, I it. But, like it. It's, but it's, it's learning from, was, was the Chip stuff harder than what you're doing now? Cause now you got the GOAT telling you where to go. You, ain't, you know what I'm saying? Just follow the GOAT. You're going to be all right. You, know all right. you, got, you got playoff Lenny that know what's going on back there with you. You, got, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You got to help you. But like, you up there in chip playbook, but you by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know he's going to oh. talk better. Who was your running back coach? Coach Gary Campbell. I heard he was a fool. Like me, me and Coach Campbell know some people that, you know, we, you know what I'm saying? We locked in on a different kind of way. And my uh, people told me, boy, GC, I was not playing with nobody. That's my dog right there. That's my dude. Uh, he he was he was he was big in helping me get to where I'm at too. But I didn't start off as a running back in that room. Um I started off as a DB. Um yeah, I went to college. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that transition came and he helped me, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic. But I would, uh, yeah. I would say, honestly, college was the hardest playbook because, I mean, that's the biggest playbook that I've had to learn at that point in time. I'm going to say what it is. I ain't, I ain't going to sugarcoat nothing. I'm going to say yeah. what it is. I mean, I know that it was, I know that it was harder. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it's just, but it, it, it what I ain't, I ain't going to say it was harder, bro, because like I said, one word told you everything that you needed to know outside of the formation, but one word gave you the route combination and everything. So, and then the league, bro, it's just a whole lot of words for no reason. It ain't no, it ain't no, it ain't no reason a, a play call should be as long as some of these play calls is. So um, for me, chip, chip system was easier to pick up because one word was everything you needed to know. So kind of talk about current day, you know, we say, play with the GOAT. You've won two championships with Tom Brady, right? Yeah, two, two with him, one against him. Ooh, oh, so, ooh, ooh, I like that. <laughs> so which 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 Super Bowl is sweeter for you? Is it one of the two that's with him or is it the one that's against him? Always gonna be my first one. It ain't got nothing to do with him. I mean I I lied. That's a lie. That's a complete lie. I just told you I'm gonna tell you like it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, for sure that first one. Um 
when I when I was in Philly, one is it was against New England, and there was always, you know, around the league this mystique of the Patriot way. You know, it was always it was all the, the Patriots were always a mystery. Um, so that Super Bowl will always be be number one in my book. Just the team that I was on, bro. Like that team was different. You know what I'm saying? You come to our practice, you would think we was at a party. The way, you know what I'm saying? The way that that's how it was all year. We was just, we was real lax. We was real goofy, always playing around. Um, shit, halftime of the soup, at the Super Bowl, you would have thought we won the game. Music blasting, we in there dancing, vibing. You know what I'm saying? But that's the type of team that we had. Um, and then just for the city, you know what I'm saying? That Philadelphia fan base is something different. The passion is something that you would never see in another sports fan base. It's just, it's, it's unmatched. Yeah, just, um, you know what I'm saying? You hearing all the different stories, you know, about generations upon generations that's been Philadelphia fans. And um, I was in an Uber, bro, after we had won that Super Bowl. And this dude had told me, you know, he crying as he talking. And he was like, I mean, he was like, my dad, when my dad died, he was like, if ever the, if ever the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl, like spread my ashes on Broad Street. And so just hearing stories like that and how the fan base is truly tied in, bro, it was just, it, it's different. So that Super Bowl ring will forever be, you know what I'm saying, the greatest Super Bowl, greatest championship I'll ever win at any level. Um, just because of the connection, the time spent in Philadelphia, um, not just with the team, but in the city, moving around the city, getting to know people within the city and really becoming, you know, a part of that Philadelphia way of life. So how does it feel to be a three-time Super Bowl champion? I mean, because some people don't even get to go to one. So, you know, is it something you you take pride in saying that? or how do you I for it? sure take pride in that. And it took me a minute to get there because, like, bro, I'm I'm super humble when it comes to this. Like, I I don't I don't brag. I don't boast about nothing. You know what I'm saying? When I'm with my family, I joke around. My friend, I'm confident. Don't get me wrong. Um, but when it comes to, like, my accolades and things that I've, I've accomplished, I don't really – I don't really think about it. I don't really talk about it. Uh, my, but my brother told me, I had a conversation with my brother Keandre uh, a couple months back. He was like, bro, you need to start walking in who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't come this far and you didn't do everything you did for you not to acknowledge yourself and the things that you do. So now, I, for sure, you know, if we talk, if we talking ball, if you talking about me, make sure you put that three time on that. You know, you know what I'm saying? That ain't, that ain't, that ain't nothing like, uh, and regardless to how they came and when they came, I'm a three-time Super Bowl champion, and can't nobody take that away from me. That's what's up. So who was faster, you or Michael? I gotta ask. Who who was faster back in the back in? You Never know? gonna say nobody faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean, me? I'm, I'm gonna make sure I clip this too. Let him let him hear that clip. <laughs> I, don't, I ain't gonna never say that. Man, I, don't, I would look. DeAnthony wasn't faster than me, and we all know the truth. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. We, we all know the truth, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't gonna never say nobody was touching me. But if we did real, yeah. my dog got it. My dog okay. had it. <laughs> I appreciate you for being real. Did you run track at Oregon? Yeah, yeah, we ran together. Oh, wow. That's so why I asked, because I, I thought you did. Yeah, yeah, we ran I, together. Yeah. So, so you was in the club singing the Meek Mills after y'all won? Boy, you know it. Okay, all right. Come on, so there's a lot of footage from all different angles of y'all going. Bro, listen, we was, we, you should have seen the special team meeting prior to like it was this. The first time they played that dreams and nightmare, they played it in a special team meeting. We getting ready yeah. for a special team meeting. I got, I think I got, I probably got a video. I got to find it. I'll send it to y'all. We um, got to send it to Tyler. We need that. It, it, bro, need that. um, I'm talking about the whole meeting room went crazy, the coaches included. Like, we, I'm talking about rocking. Rocking, <laughs> going crazy. But and y'all, was, I feel like, like y'all put the country on that song. Like, y'all made it cool. The teams emulated that. Other stadiums yeah, started playing it. Was, it. Don't get me wrong, A lot of it, people was, did. It, was, it was big, bro. Um, but the game, the game that really put it, really put everything out there was, we, I think we was playing Minnesota. Um, Minnesota, I think that was the NFC Championship game. Yeah, NFC Championship game, we play in Minnesota. Um, and they played that pregame. And that video, that, video, that video everywhere, you can find that on YouTube. Yeah. Boy, you look around that stadium, on that field, it, it, it's, it, you'll never see nothing like that again in life. 
at, at a sports at a sports game. And you'll never see it, bro. The entire stadium rocking, players rocking, we rocking. And if you look across in the video, you can see you can see Minnesota just standing there, just looking like they looking like what the hell is this? <laughs> Talking about it went, it went, it went nuts. I, I had never experienced nothing like, bro. It was like an out of body experience when I hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought yeah. I was fit, boy? Listen, <laughs> went crazy, <laughs> went crazy. My man said an out of body experience. Oh, like, <laughs> I like, clip that too, Tyler. We're going to have to turn, we're going to have to tag Dirk in that one, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to tag Dirk in that one. It was, but, like, uh, it was the out of body experience. <laughs> <laughs> R.P. Vaughn, <bomb>, man. <laughs> real talk, real talk. Yeah, R.P. Vaughn, for real. But yeah. um, I, I got a question. So, just being real, since we're being real, you you a cool brother, man. We're gonna do this again. But like, so now we in the era of NIL, right? And you were a fashion forward guy because you went to a fashion forward university. You feel me? Y'all got to wear different kind of stuff before it came out. Like I said, you had the headband, made it cool for running backs to do that. I don't, you probably don't want to take credit, but let's be real. Running backs wasn't doing that, wearing headbands, not with the, uh, Listen, you know, the Roscoe the, the Dash mo- haircut. The, 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 so, the, the Mohawk, let's talk about it. The Mohawk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it was rock star style back then, you know what I'm saying? And and you brought that. Whenever you run to the sideline, take your helmet off, you, they saw Mohawk. That was, that was Chris. And a headband. So like now in the in the age of name, image, and likeness, and you were a fast guy. Very fast. Do you think that would have played a part in your decision now? Because boy, they giving them big bags in California, boy. Lord, you see what Louisville giving away? No, did you see what Ooh. Tennessee gave away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's good. That kid's good. But uh, that kid's really good. <laughs> he he lit me up on the eight, on the uh, seven on seven circuit this year. That kid's good. That kid's really good. Oh, but that's, uh, that that nil, brother. Me and older cats, we we talk about that out there. Even cats in the league, like the amount of money that these kids is making, and I'm happy for them. You know what I'm saying? Because it, far before it really became a thing for that everybody was talking about players getting paid. I remember, bro. This might have been might have been my junior year, my junior junior or senior, my junior year, I believe. Um, two of my young boys, I still my still my dudes to the, till this day, Ayele and uh, Kenny Bassett. Um, they couldn't even eat, like they couldn't even come to the training table and get food as they were walk ons. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, these dudes go out here, they grind with us every day. They really their job is harder because the defense ain't they ain't pulling no punches when it comes to hitting. You know what I'm saying? They really yeah. getting teed off on and all that, but they can't come upstairs. And eat. I used to have to sneak these cats food out the cafeteria so they could have something to eat. Um, so just all that, but we talk about it all the time, the amount of money that these kids is making, like, get paid. I'm glad, yeah. get paid, because rightfully so, y'all deserve as much money as these universities and these major corporations is making off these kids and they names, jersey sales, and all that, life is crazy. Um, but man, I, I, I was born too early. I was born too early, okay? <laughs> I mean, because, you know, Oregon's in our little deals now, they look, woo. You know, Dante Morris from Detroit. Like, I know yeah. some of these kids going to Oregon now. You know, shout out to Coach Dillingham, Coach shout Locke. Out. Shout out. Coach, Lan- Coach Landing, one of the guys. Yeah, Coach Locke. Man, I mean, it's like, I think about, like, what if you and LaMike would have got to play for Coach Locke? You know what I'm saying? Or Coach Dillingham, who don't put that rock in your hand in space and let you <laughs> and, and, get, and get on out. Come on, man. Numbers out, lit up. Yeah. Man. But uh, do you, looking back at everything, do you? I don't, I'm not gonna ask you that. No, is there something? Well, ask me. looking back at things now, you went to a very loaded running back room. Like three of y'all are in a like high NFL people. You know what I'm saying? You're still playing, Da uh, Thomas and and uh, Lamichael, right? Mm-hmm. So obviously you weren't. Don't leave, don't leave out my dog LG though. I feel oh, like, oh, yeah. Don't leave, don't leave I, my see, dog. See, ever, ever, ever since that situation at Boise State, I kind of forgot. I, I forget until he got you to the league. Let me tell you something. You can't tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why. Because LG is a dog. In college, LG, without LG, we don't go to that Rose Bowl. 
Let's just call that. Let's just call it what it is. That's true. Without L, without LG coming in and changing the dynamic and changing the momentum of that game, yeah. we're not going to the Rose Bowl. We're not. That's the that's that's, that's, the, that's the guys on the truth. We that was a tight game. That game didn't go the way that it ended up going until Chip put through LG in there, and that was yeah. because we couldn't get it going. We had to do something different. Um, yeah, LG was the first the first big back that I seen start jumping over people, um, you know, and maneuvering in ways that small backs was moving. Um, especially at that point in time, I had never seen a big dude like that do what he was doing. Um, so definitely can't forget about LG and can't go, you can't mention that Oregon running back room. You can't mention that Oregon legacy without mentioning LG because if we being real blunt and honest about the situation, the legacy from that from 2008 on wouldn't be what it was without LG being thrown in the mix in that final game to get us to the Rose Bowl. Uh, without that, we're not going to the Rose Bowl playing Ohio State. We're going to end up in a Holiday Bowl again or something like that, you know what I'm saying? So um, definitely got to give LG his respect for what he did and what he was to that program. Do you think you guys get enough respect from your Oregon squad? Do you think, you think I get enough respect? No. Not at all. You know, people don't. People. A lot of people didn't respect our offense. They thought, you know, it was a gimmick. Um, and <clears throat> unfortunately for us, when we ran up against the Auburns, the LSU's, you know, we weren't able to do the things that we were accustomed to doing. So, um, you know, had we won, you know, we we beat Wisconsin, you know, we beat Kansas State, you know, we we had our big games, we had our big moments, but. Um, if we would have been able to shine in those moments where we played the LSUs, the Auburn, you know, those 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 schools like that, I think the respect level would have been much different. Gotcha. So what are some of your goals for this coming up season? I know you are getting ready to go to camp with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, y'all are, I was talking to a guy the other day, Eric Crocker. He's a, I don't know if you know Eric Crocker. He's out from California guy himself, played with the Jets for a little while. He does some inside uh, scooping for the 49ers, but he was saying you you guys and the Rams are probably the favorite out of the NFC. So outside of, you know, on the field and all that good stuff, what are some of the goals that you want to achieve personally this season? For me, bro, what I've learned, uh, and this is probably ain't going to be the answer that you're looking for. You probably want to hear numbers and touchdowns and this, that, and the other. Um, what I've learned, bro, my goals put limitations on God. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've learned, bro, in the grand scheme of things, what I want and what I ask for is too small. Uh, what I desire for myself is far too small for what his plan is for me. So the only thing, my goal is to stay healthy. Stay healthy and then let God have his way with everything else. I'd rather it be his way than my way any day of the week um, because his plan is far greater than what mine could ever be. Well, man, I appreciate Thanks, you, man, for coming on with us, man. No doubt, bro. Like I said, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't y'all dropping the ball. It was me dropping the ball. So I put, I, I appreciate y'all for sticking with me and still having me on because y'all could have y'all said, man, fuck him. <laughs> nah, man. We <laughs> locked in. <laughs>